DNA forensics is a remarkably broad topic in the world of biology. It literally means the use of DNA for identification. Some examples of DNA use are to establish paternity and child support cases, establish the presence of a suspect at a crime, and identify accident victims. Although this information is hugely helpful, it is essential to understand the way a forensic scientist comes to these life-changing conclusions. By the end of this documentary, you will know how DNA forensics, specifically DNA typing, is carried out in a forensic lab. One of the many aspects of DNA forensics is called DNA typing. DNA typing largely focuses on the incrimination of suspects in crimes involving forensic evidence. Forensic scientists are able to use DNA typing to create profiles of suspects and determine whether they are culpable for the crime they have been accused of committing. The man that instigated the large push in technology in the justice system is Dr. Alec Jeffries. Dr. Jeffries is a genetic scientist that brought the process of DNA typing to light in 1985. Jeffries discovered that there are specific regions in every strand of DNA that repeat the same sequence of base pairs, or amino acids, for a certain amount of nucleotides. The base pair sequence and length of repetition differs from individual to individual. For example, one suspect may contain the STR, or short tandem repetition, ATATAT. This person's repetition includes the two nucleotides, adenine and thymine, and repeats the sequence three times. Whereas another person may also repeat these two bases, adenine and thymine, but a different number of times, seven. So the second person's STR would be A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T. In order to discover these recurring similarities in one's DNA, scientists use a process called restriction fragment length polymorphism, or RFLP for short. RFLP is a process that consists of approximately four steps. First, a forensic scientist obtains the DNA from the crime scene and mixes it with a restriction enzyme, an enzyme that is coded to cut the DNA at a specific point, like AATT. After this, the DNA is put through an electrophoresis gel so that it is sorted by size. After the electrophoresis is complete and the DNA ladder has been created, a probe is attached to the gel. It seeks out the similar DNA sequence, or target sequence. Once the length of the target sequence and probe is measured, the process is repeated. Using the same restriction enzyme and the same probe, a different suspect's DNA is analyzed. By doing these multiple tests, a population frequency can be created for a database, making profiling suspects much easier if they become repeat offenders. DNA databases cause much strife in modern day society. Criminals have found ways to get around the databases by planting their DNA in crime scenes after being incarcerated or by planting another person's DNA at the scene of the crime. Databases can also be used by insurance companies to learn things about their patients ahead of time, allowing the company to drop their client without paying the medical bills their patients require to continue treatment. While this new technology has repercussions in the world, there are also many advantages for scientists to discover and utilize up-and-coming machines. New technology in the world of restriction fragment like polymorphism has recently surfaced. Instead of an audio radiograph, the printout that results from an electrophoresis gel, a machine is able to create a DNA profile electronically. As each molecular band of DNA emerges from the electric current of electrophoresis, a chemical fluorescent color fragments it. A laser then scans the band, which is analyzed by a computer. From this scan, the computer can produce a printout profile. On this profile are a series of lines, or peaks, that represent molecules. The entirety of the peaks results in a DNA profile. Not only has RFLP advanced in the recent years, so has electrophoresis. Instead of using gel plates, scientists have found that using capillaries, fine tubes that are very narrow, is more efficient. This is because the molecular fragments can move through the tubes at different rates and split just as similarly as they would in the gel. In a normal electrophoresis gel, an electric current is applied to DNA so that the different enzymes and proteins will separate, making them easier to identify. RFLP has received many advanced technologies, but a different process, PCR, has stayed relatively similar. Another process used to analyze a short chain of repetition is PCR, or a polymerase chain reaction. The PCR process does not directly analyze the DNA sequences, but it copies the repeated base pairs so the scientist has more DNA to work with. 
DNA consists of two types of regions, constant and variable. The regions are embedded within each other, so they follow this type of pattern, variable constant, variable constant, etc. Primers, whom usually lie to the left and right of the repeated sequence, are then used to indicate where the replication process should begin. Why are there two different processes? Simply because one is more efficient than the other, but also requires more time. Thus, another process was created to increase speed of analysis. Restriction fragment length polymorphism requires large amounts of DNA, which is not suitable for crime scene analysis because the DNA is much more degraded, meaning that it is very old and in poor condition. Evidence that comes from a crime scene is usually warm and moist, rendering it very difficult to work on in the lab. However, polymerase chain reaction is much faster. This is why PCR is more commonly used in the forensics labs. It can work with any DNA. The degradation plays a small part in the analysis. Although, it does have its many downsides, one of which is being extremely susceptible to error. Together, these two processes, polymerase chain reaction and restriction fragment length polymorphism, work together to compile DNA typing. All in all, DNA forensics is quite a fascinating and relatively new topic and profession. As we continue to increase our knowledge of the biological processes going on around us and become more aware of the wonderful things technology has to offer us, new ideas will reveal themselves. DNA forensics is always moving forward, though we have Dr. Alec Jeffries to thank for the initial interest in this topic.